Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow finished up 172, NASDAQ up 72, S&P's up 22. Let's go over to our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes. Don't forget, folks, Steve does an outstanding show here every trading day, 1 to 2 Eastern Standard Time. Also has a great newsletter, Mastering Probability. Now, the way you get this newsletter, you come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to see it right under Featured Content. You can hit Mastering Probability. You hit Subscribe. Steve's newsletter is $149 for one month. $695 for six months at the savings of $199 or 22%. You can get it for a year for $1,195. That's a savings of $593 or 33%. And as you're over there, don't forget, folks, we have the Tiger Dollar Sale uh, going on right now. So you can actually save a lot more money getting the Tiger Dollars. And, of course, our man, Mr. Steve Rhodes, is the 2019 Market Timer of the Year. Steve Rhodes, what's going on? Well, just watching that uh, Nordstrom uh, stock, oh, yeah. uh, you know, you're, you were, it's, which is really pretty wild. Now, um, I, the, the stores here in, in South Florida, I, I happened to be at the mall last weekend and packed. And, and this is the time of year when the tourists have left. Yes. So uh, I'm just always amazed at how packed over the weekend. It's a weekday you could shoot a cannon through there, you know, for the most part. But like you were pointing out, and I looked at that swing point, I, take, I took my chart all the way back to that to look for another swing point right you know and looked at that 2008 level and i was like oh my goodness on a weekly basis right now uh they've done about 13 million shares and the swing point that they're taking out as we speak at 4:19 in the afternoon uh had only 17 million shares it's only tuesday right yeah. you, you know so it looks like if if it closes the week below 3501 at least nineteen dollars. I mean, that would be the confirmed day to be equal CD to the downside. Nineteen. I'm saying nineteen sixty would be the one to one, but six fifty, the one to one point two seven two, getting all the way back to those two thousand eight lows. So, what a trip out there. I know. Sad, you know. It, it is. It's like you know, you get these great stores. It's it's real, folks. Not much you can do about it, but the bottom, it is sad, you know, because it's. Yeah, of all the stores out there, I actually prefer Nordstrom more than more than the other ones. Oh for yeah, some reason. it's always been a great a great store. Yeah. So, absolutely. what to watch overnight? Let's take yeah, a look at yeah. it. Yeah, I thought I thought I would put this up on the uh, screen for for everyone out there. So, this is a 30-minute chart here for the NQ, and uh, what it did at about the three o'clock uh, today was it uh, generated a Gartley cell pattern, and that's the that's what's colored in here. It did really two things. It it made a perfect A to B equal C D, which is a part of the Gartley pattern. In this case here. Uh, this was a large move to the downside, to A to B equals CD to the upside. Again, short-term charts, folks, so we'll just take a look at 30-minute chart here, but so that you can anticipate what the uh, market is communicating to you and I as far as the overnight. And it also did wave number seven, letter G, part of the Chapman Wave uh, toolbox out there. So what I'm looking for is really one of two things, and I'll, and I'll explain that. The first is I'm looking for just a natural pullback or retracement. And that retracement as we speak right now, I've got a market, 30 minute market profile that says that price could pull back to 7408. But these profiles, uh, some additional profile could form overnight. So, uh, but 7408 to the 70, um, 7395 uh, level would be just a normal natural pullback to an area where price had broken out. However, if price takes out the highs overnight, um, then we're looking at about a move to 7546. So those are the setups to be watching for in overnight uh, action. What I had, and I just threw that out there since it was a pattern that was forming, um, you know, as we were coming on the air. What I thought we could do for the next uh, several minutes is really talk about the sell in May and go away. And Tom, what it does is it, it helps to line up uh, your larger view that uh, what the markets are doing, the S&P, you took to look at, uh, I think, the ES Mini, um, uh, making setting up a B to a C of an A to B equal C D to the downside. So it's nice to put that 30-minute time frame chart in there. It's also nice to take a look at the validity, so to speak, of the sell in May and go away. And the question is, you know, how do we know? Well, first of all, where does it come from? And what I want folks to, to realize is that what, what's really being discussed there is that the market come May, and I would say May 19th, today is May 21st, really begins its unfavorable seasonal cycle. And on average, and this is during the last 86 years, we've talked about this many times, uh, the market typically moves from a high in May. There's also 
a typical counter trend rally in the summertime takes us up in, into the middle of July, but then a swoosh to the downside into October. Now it's a real benefit uh, uh, if the, but, but I don't want to talk about that per se. But that's the unfavorable seasonal cycle, folks, from May 19th basically through October, middle of October. Then there's two favorable time periods, which are the end of January through May, through May 19th, and then the middle of October through the end of the year. So the market has entered the unfavorable seasonal cycle. But the sell in May and go away, and that's where it comes from. How do we know? How do we know if it's actually working? And so what I did, Tom, is I went back and I did a study, something that's very simple for everybody to do. And I'll begin with the 2018 chart out here. And this is a weekly time frame chart for the Dow. And what I do, Tom, is I look at the April lows. So the sell in May says, hey, if this is if my 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 thought process is if sell in May or the unfavorable seasonal cycle is something to be worried about, we ought to at least see the April laws lows get taken out. In 2018, that didn't happen. And so the sell in May cycle or unfavorable seasonal cycle really didn't take hold. If we take a look at 2017, not a chance. I mean, there was a bit of a pullback towards the uh, third week in May, never got down to the April lows, the market took off to the upside. Take a look at 2016. Well, in 2016, the April lows were never taken out, maybe just by a smidgen. But again, this is a weekly chart here. They actually held. The market continued moving higher. Now, it was a bit of a sideways move from the April lows, but still they were never taken out for that uh, so-called um, anticipated larger move to the downside. 2015, totally different story. Here we can see the April lows were taken out. The markets moved down into the August uh, time frame out there. Um, so it's something to be watching for. Let's keep looking at this because in 2014, the April lows were never taken out. 2013, the April lows were never taken out. 2012, well, they were taken out. In fact, the lows, uh, the April lows failed by May 19th. The market went a bit lower for a couple of, uh, really until the uh, June time period where you typically see the counter trend rally. Take a look at 2011. 2011, the uh, lows actually failed by June the 11th. 2010, the April lows failed by May 8th. So it really does work or it doesn't work just simply by taking a look at the May level order. 2009, the April lows never failed. 2008, the April lows failed by June 21st. So let's fast forward to where we're at today. And folks, you can go back to historical charts and do the same thing. And here's what we know, Tom. The April lows have failed. And they failed just a couple of weeks ago. So the idea that the market is making that B to C leg of an A to B equal CD to the downside has proven itself just by taking a look at the April lows and the old sell in May unfavorable seasonal cycle. That's pretty cool. You know, it's crazy, folks, again, about that, because 2000 and 2007, they failed <laughs> dramatically. <laughs> yes, they did. Yes, they did. You know, so it'll be interesting. And I don't, I'm not looking for anything like that, folks, by I the know. way. It, I, it, I, I got 2000, that. 2007, but guess what? But, when they failed there, they went down 40% and 50%. So Yeah, and this validates what you're looking for, in my opinion. Wow. Listen, folks, come over to our website at TFNN. You go right under featured content. You're going to see in Mastering Probability. Sign up right here, right now, folks. Everything to gain, nothing to lose. Steve, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thanks, Tom. Take Thank care. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.